Hello! Welcome to the video. Uh, today what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be extending the wires of the remote switch that I installed uh, the other in the last video. These wires are not long enough to reach where I want them to be, where I'm going to put the switch that activates them, so I want to extend them out. I'm going to solder uh, in line some more wires uh, that will then reach the fascia. In order to do this, you need a couple of things. You need wire, uh, you need a soldering iron, you need some nippers. Uh, heat shrink is always a good idea. You could use electrical tape, but heat shrink is um, works better for me, I think. It's easier. This particular soldering iron has a torch attachment so I can take off the soldering tip and use that torch attachment as a little blow torch to melt or to shrink the heat shrink. So the first thing I want to do is uh, cut this to length. I need three pieces because I've got three wires. I like to put the heat shrink on the wires before I start soldering. Because I have these three wires bundled, I would either have to untwist them or uh, wait to put the heat shrink on until after everything had been pulled through the, the layout. I like to get it all done right away. Uh, now one of the things you may notice is that I've got a red wire, a green wire, and a black wire to match the red wire, the green wire, and the black wire of the remote switch. You don't have to do this. You don't have to match the wire colors. But it really makes it a lot easier uh, to know, oh, the green wire is the green wire, the black wire is the black wire, the red wire is the red wire. What I've done here is I've stripped back a little bit of the insulation and I'm going to create a kink on the end of the solid strand wires to, so that I can have a mechanical hold when I solder. Now you could use a clip, you could use glue, uh, you could use really a lot of other things. Oh, uh, in this case I had uh, nipped the wire too close and it broke off, so I need to strip it again. Uh, this particular set of nippers is actually not very sharp. Uh, if you have sharp nippers it will probably work better for you. Once I have this stripped, I'll go ahead and I'll take the two solid stranded wires and I don't know if you can see in here, there's a, a little bit of a kink in there. So we take these two solid strands, we twist them together, and then when we take them apart, the because it's a solid strand wire, it will retain that little waviness and that kink. And what that allows us to do is to form a mechanical bond with the other side of it, with the other wire, so that uh, we don't have to use clips or glue or anything else to hold the wires together. Now, uh, this is stranded wire, so I twist it into, I, I twist it into almost a single thing, otherwise you get a lot of stray wires. Uh, the other thing you could do is tend these which is to put some solder on them uh, before you do this. But as you can see right there, just holding it on one end and wrapping it around the kink, it creates an, a very nice mechanical bond for an inline soldering. Uh, I fluxed these wires and I'm using my gas powered torch, which means I'm being very careful to keep the exhaust port away from the foam because best case scenario of, of putting your exhaust on your foam is that you melt the foam. Worst case scenario is that you set the foam on fire, um, which is bad, unless you like setting foam on fire, which in case, I guess you can do that. Now you'll notice that last wire I soldered, I didn't even actually add solder to it. I had enough solder uh, on the tip of the soldering iron and because there's flux in there, the solder went where the flux is. And that's a good tip. The solder goes where the flux is. If you put flux where you want your solder to go, 
99% of the time, your solder will go where the flux is. So the next step is to slide your heat shrink up to your exposed wires. You may have to bend something out of the way, you may have to squeeze something a little bit to get it to, uh, to go right. And here we go, we've got the torch attachment, we light it up. Now for heat, for shrinking these, I have turned the flame down to the very lowest setting. Uh, when you're soldering, you need a, a lot of heat very quickly. When you're heat shrinking, um, you don't need a lot of heat. These things, you put a little bit of heat on them and they shrink. Hence the name. So now I'm ready to go ahead and push the wires through the foam. Uh, I have bundled the three wires together, twisted them as tightly as I can all the way to the end. I'm sorry that this isn't in focus. This is a new camera and I'm still trying to figure out how this thing works. Uh, let's go over and look at the place where we're going to push the wires through. I've started by putting a pin, two inch pin, through the inch and a half foam. So I've done this to ensure that I'm not going into a support or that I don't have anything underneath there that will interfere with where the wires come out. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to use a piece of uh, number 14 solid strand wire just to make that hole a little bit bigger. Uh, because we have those bundled wires, there is actually, they won't really fit through that one pinhole. If it was one wire, it would go through with no problem, but since it's a bundle of wires, we need to make the hole a little bit bigger. Now, in theory, having this bundled and having them be single uh, strand wires, it should be relatively easy to just poke this bundle through here. Uh, maybe that will work for you. It was not working for me. It kept twisting. Uh, one of the wires kept bunching up and basically what I ended up doing is I ended up cutting them and staggering them. And once I staggered them, it went through very well. Now when you get to where the heat shrink is, you want to be a little bit more careful just you know, to make sure that you don't uh, catch anything, snag anything. Uh, and the last thing you want to do is you want to just make sure that everything goes through. It's not tangled and twisted together on the top. Each wire is laying flat. If you cannot reach both sides of this, so I'm, uh, my layout is small enough that I'm able to reach underneath and on top at the same time. If your layout is larger than that, maybe you should get somebody to help you. So next time what I'll do is wire in the switch and we'll see how that goes. I'll see you then.